it, um, but it's really just hard to, well, first of all, a lot of people are in the online business now and like yeah. in order to grow whatever little like business that you have, like you have to promote on social media now. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it, it really kind of hinders what you can do in a day. Welcome to the Team Local Fit Roundtable. I'm your host, Lauren Conlon. Each week, we share the evidence-based practices and communication-driven strategies we use with our clients to help you look, feel, and perform your best. This week, I'm joined in person by Coach Danielle. Um, she flew in today. Yes. Right? Yeah, today. And then I'm like, what day is it? And Sam comes in Wednesday, so we're doing a little like team content week. Monday. <laughs> Team bonding. And uh, it's really going to be like Mom's Gone Wild is really what this is actually going to be since um, Sam has not had like a really, I don't think a night out like without Teddy. And I guess you haven't really either. So it's going to be Mom's Gone Wild later in the week. But first we're going to get some quality content. <laughs> and we're recording this November 1st. It was the day I came back to I know it's so dramatic, but after your sabbatical, <clears throat> after my sabbatical, uh, I was basically off Instagram for a month, which does not sound that crazy, but I have never done that. And also I run an online business. So for me, it wasn't just like, I don't want to be on social. Like it was a pretty big decision. I was really, really nervous about it. Um, but I learned a lot and it was really good. And I got so many questions about it. I was like, I feel like we should make this a podcast. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the time went by fast, though, I feel like. I can't believe it's been a month. I know. Well, I was super busy, so that helped. And then we've been putting out... I mean, we've still been doing everything else. We've still yeah. been doing the podcast, the team Instagram. You guys have been, like, killing it. Um, the Facebook page. Like, everything else has been, like, the newsletter. Like, everything else has literally been running. It was just, like, my social media. Um, so it was more about, like, me feeling like, oh, my gosh, I'm not contributing at all. But it was much needed. And, yeah, that, it really did... Like, October yeah. was, like... Insane. I literally can't believe it's November. I'm that person now. And spooky season's over. Sad. Literally, the Christmas decorations were out like before Halloween. I know. I saw. So I was rude. Taking them trick or treating yesterday, and there was a Christmas tree in like the middle of a plaza. I'm like, it's Halloween's not even over yet. Yeah, like, like let Halloween have its have its day. I know it's overshadowed by Christmas every year, but whoever makes these decisions should Get be sooner fired. and sooner every year. <sighs> Anyways. So what was the first thing that I noticed about being off social media? I talked a little bit about this if you guys listened to the podcast I did with Joe Sheehy. Um, it was titled like Mindfulness and Meditation. And the first day, I mean, it was like so compulsive, like checking. Um, and like on my phone, I have my app like on like the last screen. So I have to like open it and like scroll to like get to it so it's like another barrier <laughs> um but I would, so I would literally open the phone and like go to that without even like having a real reason to go on there. i mean sometimes i'd be like oh i need to go check this or like go look this up and then i was like oh but so many times i just grabbed it and i mean think about how many times we do that in a day like, oh yeah i mean when you were off of social media that's when instagram shut down for like five hours oh yeah i remember turning off my phone turning back on Deleting the app, re-downloading the app, like it's it's really actually sad the amount of times like I tried to open Instagram yeah. and like get it to work to the point where I was like, okay, well obviously it's just not working. I think I tried like maybe seven times. Yeah, but that's like very embarrassing. I, um, <laughs> it was it was like an embarrassing amount of like times that I checked the first day, just out of compul like literally just grabbing my phone to look at it for no reason. And if I did have Instagram. I would have done what we all do. We open it and we would have scrolled and seen stories and explore whatever the hell like we all look for. Like you look at reels, like I usually look at stories and like you're like, oh shit. Like now you're like you grab your phone to do something and then you open Instagram instead and you're like, why the fuck did I grab my phone yeah. in the first place? Like And I don't even realize a lot of times you don't even realize why you're doing it. You know what I mean? That's where like the compulsion is. So I know a lot of people talk about being addicted to technology and like the dopamine release and all that, but I do think a lot of it is also just like a compulsive behavior because we've like gotten so used to that um so that was very alarming <laughs> and then um the first few days too especially but just in general but i noticed that like when i didn't want to feel or like sit with a negative emotion that's when i would really go to grab it obviously it makes sense like if you're waiting in line somewhere and you know you, you know you pull up your phone and look at something or just kind of any kind of like little bit of downtime it makes sense 
Um, but this was more like I want to distract myself actively. And that's when I would go to grab it, like when I felt like very agitated and then I, I couldn't. And I mean, there's no other app, so I'm going to look at my phone. Like what else? Like stop my aura ring, you know what I mean? Like app. Like, so you don't have TikTok? No, I don't have, no, I didn't have any other social media yeah. on my phone. Um, <clears throat> I still had, I, I don't have any other apps on my phone actually. Um, I still have um, the YouTube app, but I, I really don't like YouTube and that was not going to be like a compulsive thing that I was doing. So um, there was really no issues there. So. Um, yeah, nothing was on my phone, like no Instagram, no Facebook, no Twitter, which I don't really use Facebook or Twitter, but like, even though it was a Facebook just... group, Lauren. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I totally use the Facebook. I use, I use the Facebook. I just said that. I use the Facebook all the time. Uh, I do need to start using it. We do have a pretty awesome Facebook group we just started, so. <clears throat> yeah, we just started. So. FYI, if you want to join, <laughs> it's open to everybody. We'll put that in the show notes. Um. And I do go on there. I actually tried to go on. It was so embarrassing. Like, I am so not tech savvy. And I have done Facebook Lives before. Like, I've, It's changed a Okay, lot. well, yeah. I didn't know that. And I was having a panic attack. And Well, not really. But I was, like, panicking. <laughs> not really an attack. It was just panic. <laughs> and you weren't answering me. And I was like, okay. So I just had to – I did it twice. And I, I didn't think that it was going through. And I was like, I don't want to record this. And then, like, nobody be able to see it. And so I just, like, exited out really quickly twice. And then I just decided to record record it on my phone and upload a video like a total moron but anyways yeah join our Facebook group we're <laughs> awesome <laughs> but yeah so two of the biggest things that it really made me realize was okay I'm compulsively grabbing this um, and then I'm also using this as a distraction when I maybe don't want to feel something so that's definitely going to be the hardest thing to regulate now that I have the app back on my phone I mean I never deleted my account obviously I just deleted the app um, but without I mean that is going to require a lot of like, oh, hey, I need to recognize this pattern or this behavior, like let me put my phone away or let me move to the other room. Um, but yeah, that's definitely going to be hard because now that it's there, yeah. that's what it does. You just click it and then all these new things show up. It's a whole world. Um, but I was gone. So for part of the time, part of why the time flew by, at least for me, was I was gone for three of those weeks. Um, so it really allowed me to be fully present when I was traveling. And not that I don't do that. Like, I'm already terrible when I travel at, like, getting content. Like, you always tell me. <laughs> and I was like, hey. She you literally do let, went to Fall Fest, where it's like, first form is all, you know, about, like, on their phone and stories and, like, people taking photos. There's like no photos whatsoever about Lauren at all. Like we can't even use any content stuff except for that one reel of me throwing the pumpkin. Oh my god! Yeah, the only content I got was a picture in front of a uh, hot air balloon and then me really anticlimactically throwing a pumpkin. Well, not throw. It was like a like a Sling launch, shot. a slingshot, and then mine did not go anywhere. Um, yeah, literally, Paula was like, "Hey, do you have any like favorite memories from first form you could like or fall fest you could like share with me?" And I was like, "I have two pictures." And she was like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> it was like literally the entire weekend. So normally I'm not great with it, but it really did allow me um, to be fully present and kind of like enjoy those like slow moments. Um, so like part of the trip, I was in Colorado um, for a week and I went out there by myself. And like normally I would, you know, I have no problem talking to people, but it really allowed me to like exercise those extrovert skills because I didn't have something to like rely on where I would go somewhere and I'd be like oh grab my phone but I just no I'm just gonna put this away um so that was really nice and somebody asked me actually they said like what would you have done if you weren't traveling you know what I mean like obviously that did give me some like that did give me stuff to do yeah. essentially um and I feel like I just would have done like kind of my normal I would have like read I definitely would have read more <laughs> when I was traveling I was like I did read but I was like going all the places to like see other things I would have done stuff like around the house and like just spent time like with people so I, I probably would have just done what I did just on like a more scaled down version <laughs> but like less novel I guess but. yeah there's other influencers that will take like their little social media break and then they'll go out and get like certifications and like you just are so much more productive yeah when you don't have this yeah it, um, but it's really just hard to well first of all a lot of people are in the online business now and like yeah. in order to grow whatever little like business that you have like you have to promote on social media now yeah. um but at the same time it, it really kind of hinders what you can do in a day i know it's such a weird like dichotomy of like i use this as a productive thing 
for business and education, but then it also makes me unproductive <laughs> because it's taking it's it's adding to the business and it's taking away from the business at the same time, which yeah. makes no sense. But it is so, and that's where I think like, well, I have a lot of disdain for it for many reasons. <laughs> Like, I like, I feel like I've been like red pilled with social media to the point where like, I can, I know what it's doing like to me and I know what it's doing to like society like at large and that really bothers me even though I have no control over that and like me choosing to use social media or not is not changing that effect but I still know it and it still like bothers me, you know what I mean? But you're also that type of person who like gets very upset about like <laughs> other problems yeah. that like don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Literally like today we parked and like there's like a um, what's lightning game. A lightning game. They're a, a hockey team. They're pretty good, allegedly. Um, they won two, what, two Stanley Cups? Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's good. Is, right? Yeah, that's yeah. good. We um, like don't know sports, obviously. <laughs> we're like, I, I they're okay. Okay. <laughs> Like is it ice skating? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know I don't know anything about sports, but apparently Tampa has been killing it as of late, um, just in general. But normally I'm coming to the office earlier and then I like leave later. But we came in later, and um, parking was just crazy because of the game, and I just felt really bad. I was like, oh my god, Danielle, like we should have come a different day. You didn't need a parking. <laughs> And like she was like, we're already here. Like it's not a big deal. So anyway, that's definitely not what this issue is, but. <laughs> I do get hung up on things that like don't affect me, but I will say that amidst my disdain for all of it, um, it did also like reconnect me to the purpose of like why we are on there, right? Because it's not that I don't like what the fitness industry is or like what we're doing within the app. Like I think what we're doing is really good. So it's more just about like it on like this like larger scale, but I did, I do think it gave me that kind of like clarity like oh no what we do does matter you know what I mean and like there are there is still so much bad information out there and there's plenty of people who like need help so like okay we can actually like do good things on this platform yeah um there's a lot of people too who appreciate our posts like maybe they don't comment and maybe they don't share but like they yeah, actually like, appreciate it like hey, hey <laughs> um if you really appreciate it please comment and share but um like, they'll, like comment share subscribe they'll like dm and be like hey this post was really helpful and then I'm like, For okay, sure. well, can you go comment on it? But like, <laughs> really though, um, we're helping a lot of people and it's just, we have to get past that like negative side of social media. I know. Or you need to get past it. Yeah, it's really not <laughs> you guys. It's really, well, I mean, I think everybody can feel it at different times. Um, and then the other thing too, I think that I, I realized is that like I started to like self-censor myself, I guess. You know what I mean? Because... Like, when I first started, it was, like, just me, you know what I mean? So, like, I could just post stuff and it didn't matter because it was just me. And then the business was growing, but it was still just me. And then now it's, like, I represent the team and I don't want anybody, like, regardless of what people say, like, what who you surround yourself with, people are going to assume, maybe rightfully or wrongfully, that, like, that's, like, your belief or, like, your thoughts or your whatever, right? So I never want to share anything that, like, maybe that would be bad for like the team, you know what I mean? Um, but then I'm all like, not even like super important stuff, just like silly stuff, but I have a very weird personality and like weird sense of humor and whatever. And like, I just found myself like not even sharing that kind of stuff because I was like, oh, I don't know how that's gonna be perceived. Or like, I have to be educator, coach Laura, and like, I can't share this other stuff. And I was like, maybe that's part of why I don't like, I haven't been liking it either, you know what I mean? Cause I'm like, oh, don't share that. But then when I meet people in person, they're like, oh, you like this or like that's so cool or whatever like and i told you this like multiple times like people want to see the fun side of you um and like know your interests like people care about you as well like educational posts are great but sometimes people want to know what you like and what you laugh at and like your little doge <laughs> memes and like your shirt sure. <laughs> i don't know so <laughs> Unless, I mean, Team Loco Fit's branded because of, like, your emo goth self. Like, so I think people already know some of your personality but and you wanting to hide it, um, I feel like it's a little not necessary sometimes, like, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I started doing it. I mean, I definitely started doing that because, like I said, of, like, of, you know, the team and, like, having you guys. And not, like, anybody said to do that. <clears throat> it was something that I chose to do. Um, but I do think that that contributed to me not liking posting as much, you know what I mean? Or feeling like, oh, this is funny, but like, I can't share that or, or whatever. So um, yeah, I guess get ready 
for my, I won't share everything because there's definitely some stuff that I'm like, this is funny, but I'm not sharing this publicly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do definitely have a weird, weird sense of humor. Um, <clears throat> and one of the other things too that I'm just gonna have to do moving forward, which I think all of us could do a better job at, is just moderating like times, like how you spend your time on it. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? I mean, I could easily get lost in getting ideas for like content yeah. and then I scroll TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on TikTok for an hour. Um, while the kids are napping, when I could easily be doing my InDesign, like, yeah. thing that I'm trying to do. So, um, yeah, we could easily get, like, lost in all of this. Yeah, and of course, like, you know, shit happens, like, you know, not every day is going to be, like, this perfect thing, but just in general, I think that a lot of people, when I did take this time away, a lot of people were, you know, asking, like, about, like, how do, how do you moderate this? Like, I feel like it's so hard, and it really is, and I think that it does come down to, like, if you are if you are somebody who is posting consistently like you know trying to say okay like i'm gonna try to like put a few captions together in like a like a batch of time or i'm going to post around this time um and if you like need to schedule that out for yourself like maybe do that because i know for for me like the worst thing is just the constant going back and forth and like um it's like it's called like attention residue so like basically like if you I'm looking at this sheet of paper, but then I look at something on my phone, and then I go back to the sheet of paper. The attent there's still like that residue of my attention that's left on this other thing that I was just on, but now I'm back here. And then it takes a long time for your brain to like recalibrate. Like, wait, what was I looking at on this piece of paper? Where did I? Who talked about this? Huberman. I feel like I've read about um, his. Where I learned it from was Cal Newport. Um, so. I've talked about it before because Maybe. of him, um, and it's it's it makes so much sense. I was like, oh, duh, like you know what I mean, like hello. Um, and I think that that is one of the things that people struggle with the most. It's just like moderating their time, not just because of how like compulsive or addictive it becomes. It's just because of that like attention residue that you have from whatever you were looking at. So I think for me, I definitely am going to moving forward structure my time, I guess, a little bit better with it. Um, whether it's, you know, and sometimes I'll do this, but like actually like pre-planning some of the things I'm going to say, um, and like doing that in a, a batch of time. Cause like for me, if I'm like, hey, yeah, I'll just get to that post, like it's not happening. You know what I mean? And sometimes stuff is spontaneous because of like the nature of the post, but especially if it's like an in-depth caption, which most of mine happen to be like. That you could turn into a carousel. <sighs> okay. I still got to write it. So <laughs> whatever it is, whether it's like the carousel or the infographic or like the caption, like. I still have to write that and like yeah. I can't just sit down and like just turn my brain on to like write stuff easily that's just not an easy like <laughs> switch for me <laughs> like, whatever part of the brain that is I do not have um so I have to get better at setting aside time to not only create that like the actual content um but also like getting better at like okay I'm going to put this fit if it's just like physically in a different room like that helps a ton you know what I mean like if because if it's right and reaching distance like that's where you just grab and grab yeah. so having it whether it's like a different room or just like on the other side of the table or something where you can't like you have to get up and get it like that makes it a lot easier that's like the candy dish metaphor that you used with I don't know what podcast you talked about it but it's like if the candy is like right there obviously you're gonna grab more like but yesterday compared to, <laughs> compared to it's like kids in my neighborhood <laughs> little shits you know what fuck that. next year i'm gonna find shits past two years in a row I bought candy, nobody's come to my door, and then guess who eats it, which is totally fine, but I probably, not probably, I, wait, <laughs> I have never had a take five, do you know what that oh, is? Oh, those are awesome, oh, yeah. My, so I wanted to buy the candy that like I didn't like for the kids, and then the only things left at Target <clears throat> when I went were Reese's Cups, my absolute favorite, Peanut M&M's, second favorite, and then take five. Like the whole Reese's just like, brand just kills it right anything that's topped with peanut butter like i'm eating and then this had pretzels and like caramel like it was like the best things all that's your first time having it yes it, last time i can't i can't <laughs> i can't buy the level them. one protein bars that's what they're like yeah so oh those like, are my favorite yeah like chocolate peanut butter pretzels like literally my favorite combination <laughs> of all time um but yeah that shit was 
so good. Why did I start talking about healthy candy? Oh, the candy bowl. Yeah, so like if that's in front of your face, like every time I would just walk by, I'm like, oh, they're snack size or fun size, whatever the fuck they're called, little tiny size. And I was like, oh, a little just bite size thing. And then you're like, why do I have six bite size take five? It's like, that's all yeah. I take five. Yeah, we, uh, I, <laughs> I went trick or treating yesterday with the kids, and those little fun size, like Twix, those are my mm -hmm. favorite. I had five of those last night. Yeah. Um, my stomach hurt really bad, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not even about the calories. It's about like you just feel like absolute garbage when you eat just a bunch of candy. Like, oh, so bad. Our post was really great though in terms of like have the Halloween candy. We yes. definitely. Oh, we did it. I, that was that was speaking from we. I took that advice and I ran with it. Um, I did bring the rest of my hairdresser. She always had like a little bowl, and I'm like, take this. You're not allowed to say no. And she was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Uh, so yeah, definitely going to moderate my time better, which is going to be hard, but it's going to be something that like I know after like how much better I felt, like just like clarity with like work and life and like, like just everything. I felt so much better not being on. And I know that it's not a reality to not be on social media, like for our business. Um, so it's like, all right, what can I learn from this? I just need to moderate my time better. Um, and that certainly comes from not only making the post, but also like the access of it. Um, and I know I've talked about before, like sleeping it in a different sleeping with your phone like in a different room or, or whatever like getting an alarm um that's something that's so easy to just like fall out of you know what i mean because you're like oh i'll just you know i'll just I, I, i'm not gonna scroll for a while i'm just gonna use this alarm and then you're just like ding ding ding, ding and yeah like, i know that if i wake up and grab my phone like instantly i'm grabbing my phone way more often yes. throughout the rest of the day so mm -hmm. as i wake up and i make my coffee and mm -hmm. maybe i read I don't touch my phone as often as oh, yeah. I. I'm showing my nails. Um. <laughs> Two nails, really embarrassing nails right now. And I mean, mine don't look much better, but yours look really bad. <laughs> Uh, the parents who are listening, if your kids get hand, foot, and mouth, and then you get hand, foot, and mouth too, um, just keep in mind that your nails are going to fall off eventually sick. afterwards. Um, so yeah, <laughs> sick. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. So I notice if I am just like focusing on either doing work or reading or something in the morning and I don't touch social media, I'm more likely to not touch it. Whereas if yeah. I open it and I, I just find myself like the kids are playing and I'm scrolling on social media. And you're just much more distracted the whole day. Mm -hmm. I, I find that too. And just like very, um, I wouldn't even say like anxious. It's just more like, like I'll wake up, even if it's not just social, but like, should I check my email? I'm going to do this. Good. And it's like, oh God, like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like nothing is that important. You know what I mean? Like oh, I'm going to get to it in 30 minutes, like, <laughs> but I'm going to get to it in like a much better state in 30 minutes than if I just look at this right away. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to start practicing more of that, like moderation type practices. So I will keep everybody posted how those go and like what actually works and like what doesn't. Um, and the biggest questions, I mean, I got a lot of questions kind of in this whole time period, um, but I kind of tried to sum up like the, like, most common ones and really I had a lot of people ask me about like okay did you go off of this because you were having like anxiety over social media like did this get any better um and I wouldn't say that I necessarily have like anxiety over social media like in and of itself um but it's definitely like just makes me more like on edge and like distracted and then I, I get more on edge and more anxious because I'm distracted not necessarily because of social media like itself but because of like how I would feel and then I would be less productive and then that would make me anxious. You know what I mean? It wasn't like the social media it was, it was like the trickle down effect yeah. that it had. Because now you're behind on work and now you have to do this and you can't go to yeah. jujitsu because you had to send the last emails or exactly. something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, now I'm pissed. You know? Yeah. And then you're like, well, what am I going to do now? Well, I guess I'll be honest with you. <laughs> It's like and, a circle effect. Yeah, it literally would just make everything, and I'm making it sound super dramatic, like my life isn't run by this app, but it's like just small little things that like add up, and it's like, all right, even if it's an hour a day that is like less productive, like what could I be doing that is either productive in that hour or enjoyable in that hour? Because let's be honest, like nobody scrolls for 20 minutes and it's like, oh, that was so enjoyable. Now, maybe if you scroll for like 20 minutes, like once a day, that's enjoyable because like you see like a few things and like you catch up with people but after a while we all know like there's a point where like this is no longer fun and you're just there obviously you don't have tiktok so i mean i can scroll tiktok for a long well, time but TikTok i do dumb as fuck which is why i don't have it Literally, but I, you know. I just don't every time you send me one i'm like why why are we? and then she made me make one it was there's legitimately 
<laughs> no point to it. There's, I mean, there's some good ones that you would yes. like if you follow like the sciencey people because there's okay. sciencey people on there. Like Joe Rogan's on, he's not sciencey, but like he's on there. Um, but anyway, Joe Rogan who's on TikTok. Just his podcast. Oh, but okay. Like what you do on your TikTok. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, yeah. If, if I if you ever stumble on my TikTok, know that it's Danielle. <laughs> it's just a podcast, and you do have access. I, I sent you the password. Oh, I don't remember that. I really remember my normal password, let alone the TikTok password. <laughs> yeah, that cheat sheet. Um, but no, I do find myself even I'll be scrolling TikTok, which is sometimes enjoyable. I'm like, okay, I need to get out of this app, and then yeah. I'm scrolling again. I'm like. I need to get out and then I scroll again. I'm like, wow, this what is like I? a my trap. Like, yeah. <laughs> it really, it really is. Not that it's not enjoyable, but you're like, I could be doing something that's more like fulfilling or like literally anything else. Yeah. You know she's I mean? like, one more, one more, one more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw my phone away. So that was what was so great about, you know, having all those things that I was doing, you know what I mean? While I was away. Um, but that could have easily been achieved even if I was home. It would just been a lot different um i don't know because I'm, I'm not somebody who really gets bored like i'm not on i typically don't i don't go on social media because i'm bored i'll just be like oh i'm distracted Ding. okay let me look at this and i just i just grab it right it's not because i'm like oh i have nothing to do let me go scroll like I, that's not me at all like i'm always like i got a hundred things i want to be doing you know what i mean so then i get like frustrated like why would i be on here if like I want to be doing these other things. Um, so, no, I didn't necessarily have, like, anxiety over, like, social media, like, in and of itself. Um, it was more, like, the kind of the trickle-down effect. Um, and I got a few questions on, like, dealing with the pressure specifically as, like, a coach because um, this person asked, like, you know, people will have that assumption, like, if you're not posting, like, you don't have any clients. Um, and I would say, actually, this kind of can go both ways. So, one, yes, obviously, if you have an online business, it is going to be something that's going to be like the last point that I talk about, like having a business tied to social. Like it is important to obviously share that you have a business because people will forget that you, you know, unless you're Joe Rogan, everybody knows Joe Rogan has a podcast. Well, he does a lot of things, but he, Joe doesn't need to post that he has a new podcast out, right? Like everybody knows. Well, I honestly didn't know about him until I had TikTok. So, um, excuse me. <laughs> Same thing with Huberman. I mean, I didn't know about him until you talked about him. Um, so I'm like, but Joe, Joe is the biggest podcaster. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but people will forget. Like, hey, yeah. you had a client message you saying, like, oh, I didn't know you were accepting new clients. Mm -hmm. This yeah. was a year, I don't know how well, long ago oh, that's was. Oh, that still happens. People, yeah. oh, are you taking on new clients? Like we're, all, like, we're a coaching business. Like, that's what we do. Like, we take on new clients. And I understand, like, everybody has a different, like, business model. So people might think that it's, like just taking on at certain times but yeah we're always taking on clients that's how our service-based business works um but to this person's point yeah there is a pressure because like, if you're not always sharing people just kind of forget about you um unless you've already hit that like proverbial tipping point or like you don't really need it um but also to the same effect there's been times where i will post less not because i'm like so like disinterested in social media but because i'm so busy with clients you know what i mean so there is kind of like that balance you know um like, like so chanel said in that podcast um uh, where she, people were asking when she's coming back to youtube that's low-hanging fruit i would much rather focus on my clients than put out stuff that you know just takes more time and isn't always benefiting the, the people who actually pay for our services exactly um and it's fun but it's very time consuming like i mean you know time consuming youtube is um especially with like the editing and the different clips and all that and like if that's not making a return on her primary business then why are you going to do that you know mm -hmm. when you can service more people for what you really care about not just like this fun thing on the side um so yeah totally understand that um but yeah i had a lot of questions mainly they're like wait how do you have an online business and you love social media or i have an online business and i've been wanting to do this like i just don't think that i can um and i will definitely say that it was you know it was a really big decision um thankfully you guys are all great and you understand i mean i talked to everybody before it wasn't like i was just like peace like um you know and everything else was still running like i said we have the newsletter um, we have the podcast coming out, we have the YouTube videos, we have the Facebook group, we have the team page, you know what I mean? So it wasn't like we, I, everybody completely fell off the mat. We went like radio silent for the whole month. Um, and because, you know, I have this great team, we were able to kind of keep things going. Um, 
but yeah, it definitely slowed things. I mean, I, I'm not going to say it was like our busiest month ever because I wasn't sharing a bunch of stuff. Um, but that was temporary and I knew that I was obviously only going to do it for, at first I was like, I'm going to do this for two weeks and I was like, this is so enjoyable. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I really am gone for like this whole time. Like it'll just make more. And you were like, just take the month. Like that's what you said you wanted to do. And I was like, okay. And then November 1st was a Monday. So that made me feel great about it. And <laughs> cause OCD things. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take off. Like I said, this whole month of October, which is what I had told myself I was going to do. Um, so I think it really just kind of depends on like what position you're in in your business you know like obviously if you're in a position right now where you're like struggling to keep the lights on and like social media is what is driving your business whatever that looks like probably not the best time to do it you know what i mean um it was a very stressful time for me to take time away um and it maybe wasn't the best time but i there was all these other things going on that like the, the pros did outweigh the cons for me specifically um and yeah so i think it's gonna matter like where you are um, but I do think that the main concern people have is, you know, because everybody's on social media and everybody's trying to have an online business, particularly for like online nutrition coaching and, and fitness stuff, right? It seems like, oh my gosh, everybody's in this, like, I'm just going to get forgotten like tomorrow. So I get it. It is really scary. But if you're feeling like, like you can't be a good insert, whatever, if it is a coach or it's a different business owner or a different employee, whatever it is, then it might be the best thing for you to take that step back. Yeah, I mean, your mental health comes first yeah. before, you know, business. Like, I mean, take care of your clients or whatever, but also oh, take care of your yeah. mental health too. Yeah, I was, um, I mean, I was, no, like I wasn't yeah. working. I was still yeah. working, of course. I'm saying to the people out there, oh, like, yeah. if you're really overwhelmed, do something that you could take a step back from, which would be social media. You can't take a step back from making your products. If you sell, like, actual physical products, you can't take a step back from, like, client check-ins, mm -hmm. but you can take a step back from social media. And also we don't own social media. Like it could go, it could get taken away at any point. So like maybe if you are feeling that way, start an email list mm -hmm. and start a newsletter and like do things that you actually own. Like maybe focus on a website or a blog or something along those lines where you aren't having this competitive nature or like you comparing yourself to other people like and feeling bad because like oh this person's doing that and like I should be doing this and then you kind of just go into this downward spiral of I'm not good enough and why am I here and all of these like emo thoughts um <laughs> where you could just you know take a step back and focus on other things that will still build your business yeah and I think that's also an important lesson too like what Danielle's saying is to diversify like the types of information on the platforms that you're using that's why we have a bunch of different ones that's why I was like last year I want to do like all in on this podcast you know what I mean and like it's slowly building this momentum and you redid the website too yeah oh yeah redid the website um we like now have everything on there we have the newsletter which we've been changing and i've been really excited about the like, newsletter is awesome now yeah, yeah if you don't, don't uh subscribe to the newsletter now is like definitely the time to do it i love the one where it was like coach's favorites and yeah. the little shit's creek thing at the bottom that was oh really cute. my god sam did a great job laughed so I was crying hysterically. I'm, I think I'm going to post that on my page just because I think it's so funny. Um, so if you guys didn't get that email, you'll get it on my Instagram. <laughs> the real reason I'm back, I just wanted to post this. Uh, but no, I she sent it to me and she photoshopped all of our faces as like characters from Schitt's Creek. And I, I was like, it, like ugly crying in the airport like and then with Karina looking like the oh, guy from Squid Games the old man Karina's like I look like the dad from Squid Games and I was like what and when she sent that picture I was just done I obviously was, I was, you haven't watched Squid Games because no it's not a dad it's just the oh old, the rich old man oh I thought it was spoiler dad. alert okay um but anyway <laughs> oh whatever okay I, cool but you should watch it no okay <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it looks like you know I get too into stuff so then I'm gonna like have to finish it but I feel like I'm not gonna it's like it it's only one season that's a finished just creep. <laughs> no, we're That's like four seasons. I know, but they're like 20 minute episodes. <laughs> like, this is so short. Sure. Um, anyways, so yeah, definitely uh, diversify your what you offer as a business if you are an online business in any capacity. Um, so you are able to interact with people. And then of course, too, you know, doing things in person. I was just, you know, talking with... Um, you know, we talked about this a little bit on the last podcast, but the, the business event that I did with Dr. Joe... 
you know, we're talking about like the, the next big shift we we think is going to be back to in-person stuff, you know, because there's been such this big shift online that people are like dying for in-person interaction, you know what I mean? And even if it's like small scale stuff, like that is definitely going to be like a big push. So like if that's something that you're interested in or if you're a business that like obviously has a physical location, like take advantage of like your community, like in person, like people really, really like want that. And that is a one of the best ways to just have like a like a long standing business, you know, because you might get a lot of traction with social media, um, but if you have a really good community presence, that's going to be huge. So, like, um, when is the next team up event meetup? Wow, putting me on the spot. Okay, <laughs> guess we'll talk about that later this week, Danielle, for <laughs> Coaches Week. Um, and then I did have to laugh at this. Um, one of my clients, <laughs> she's like, "Did your um, well?" This is a good question, but she said, "Did your consumer like did your?" Did you buy less, you know, like or purchase less because oh, she feels sure. like social media drives consumerism? And I said, no, I was hanging out with Chanel. So um, I was buying way more stuff because Chanel is like the influencer of the year. Um, you guys always hear me like say like she could literally sell me anything, but I'm not kidding. Like she always has the best recommendations. So um, no, it wasn't just her. Honestly, fall is like my favorite time to buy stuff. It's like what I wear year round. So I feel like I get my whole wardrobe for like the next year in fall. Cause every time something comes out, I'm like, oh, I love this. I love this spring. It's black. <laughs> basically it's just a dark color. Um, and because we're in Florida, like I, or even if I shop online, like I'll get like light stuff, you know what I mean? To like layer or whatever. Um, but I mean, honestly, like spring fashion, like, uh, Florals. worst nightmare. Um, and summer is way hit or miss. I feel like winter is always like, Meh. so fall is like my jam for clothes. I like so, the neutrals, like the browns and hence yeah. the brown. <laughs> brown, white, black, gray. This is this is like beige and beige. Like lint everywhere. Beige and lint, yeah, that is like really shedding. But oh, it's I cute. I should have. You should probably watch that by itself. Yeah. That's going to be a nightmare otherwise. All your clothes are going to have that all over it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was just kind of the recap. And I wanted to share this because, like I said, I got so many questions like during the process. And I know that a lot of people struggle with this. Whether it was the reasons that I was struggling with or not, I do think that a lot of us use it as a distraction tool. We are on it entirely too much. And it's not that being on it is you know, making you feel a certain way, but it's like what that trickle down effect, it might be making you feel a certain way, but mostly what does that trickle down effect look like for your life? Um, and then also just, you know, how to actually moderate that over time if you do have a business, because it is that balance of like, I need it, but I also like want to have my life too. So I don't know, anything else you want to know? I think that was it. We covered Good. a lot. Yeah, we did. All right, well, as always, thank you guys. And we did kind of nicely plug all of our great things we have going on. So Facebook group, newsletter, articles, uh, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what's on there, but um, I guess you can go follow Danielle's TikTok, which I'm just gonna have silly things. Oh, I don't even post oh. that anyways. Oh, mine, okay. <laughs> Dude clips. Um, YouTube, all of that, you can find that. I'll put that in the show notes. And then you can visit teamocafit.com to apply for coaching or send us an email. So thank you guys, as always, for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.